Robert. Sir. Homeowners are struggling. Oh, no. What is it, a rainstorm? Flood? Well, I mean, for many reasons that we've discussed on previous episodes of Real Estate Chat, and there's some, there may be some good news this coming week, or maybe not so good news, or maybe not news at all. Well, no news is good news. On this episode of Real Estate Chat with... Jonder Perez. And Robert Ede, we're going to ramble on about what's happening in the real estate market and what has transpired in February. Robert has prepared a special treat for you all ahead of the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board announcing the stats. And we're going to share something with you about the coming week that some of you may be excited about, some of you may not be excited about, and others don't care. Make sure you <laughs> like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, so let's start first with... FP Posey's Robert, thanks for sending this to me. And uh, this article basically talks about a recent Royal LePage survey that found 56% of Canada's adult population said they have postponed their property search because of higher interest rates. Uh, we jumped down because there was something really interesting here about the struggle being real. Uh, struggling, here we go. Rate Hub survey polled 2,000 homeowners. Uh, Robert, were you polled for this? No, I think they uh, use the Angus Reid cooked the books polling method. Okay, so pick 2,000. That didn't include Robert and myself. <laughs> Real estate chat viewers, I doubt you were surveyed here. But amongst the 2,000, almost 70% said it has become more challenging to pay their mortgages since the rate hikes began not so long ago, March 2022. That's actually going to be two years ago. And they're struggling. However, you know what, Robert? This mm. coming week is something special happening from the Bank of Canada. What, what's coming up on Wednesday? Well, their periodic announcement of action or inaction and the reasons therefore, uh, the Bank of Canada rate. And guess what it would take for many of these struggling or not so happy, I guess, home buyers sitting on the sidelines or anybody that is looking to buy real estate or make a move. Guess how much it would pay, take about... Uh, rate cut for them to go ahead and just jump back in. Well, it looks like there's an array. 10% say, some say that they're waiting 18%, so they're waiting for half a point or a whole point, 23%, they need more than a one point. Well, all of them will be satisfied within 18 months. And uh, whether they decide for other reasons, like there's a lot of... Uh, quite solid mortgage brokerage individuals saying, well, look, we've come to the point now where the fixed is the most expensive. I don't think you really want to have that fixed rate. I'm sorry, the fixed is the cheapest. Well, you don't want to have the fixed five year for five years because we know rates are going to come down the very opposite of what we knew a little while ago. So that if you have the stomach for it, maybe what you want to do is take the variable and have some short-term pain, maybe it'll be a point higher. And uh, by the time this one and a half years goes by, you'll be in variable territory where the variable as it normally is, is lower than the fixed. So uh, some people who are on the sidelines don't have any stomach. Some people who are on the sidelines are waiting for an absolute advantage of price and um, interest rate uh, on their monthly payment. And others on the sidelines are sure that we have gloom and doom coming at our door and everything's going to crash and they'll say 50 percent so you know you ask economists and you get everybody pointed in every direction you ask consumers and you get them all to saying what favors themselves so well, anyway the upcoming uh, rate hikes though robert uh up, well, what's going to happen then up down or nothing 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 even the most optimistic person is saying April, and they are just afraid to change their paperwork when they really should be changing it to June. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the second half, we'll see. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Uh, a half to 1% in the second half of the year, but before June, nothing. All right, so nothing coming up. And if you're watching this and it's already the rate hike week because you watched it. Uh, oh, okay. And the final thing is because for interest rates to come down will mean conditions are bad. And we're not seeing bad conditions. We're seeing weak conditions. We're seeing weak conditions. And there's uh, we reviewed it in our last episode. So make sure you watch the previous episodes 
uh, because there's mixed signals. And that was literally the topic of that. But let's look at the good side of things, because Robert, you prepared a couple of analysis ahead of Toronto Regional Real Estate Board launching its market report. And we're going to look at that now. So Robert, take us away with uh, your how you feel February did and the takeaway of what our real estate chat viewers should make their move considering what's happening in the week ahead and uh, reflecting on these numbers. Okay. So this is looking at February by halves, first half, second half. The Toronto Real Estate Board used to, or for a short period of time, put out first half, second half uh, stats, but then they realized that that was too skinny a slice of time. And if you have a spring break or a long weekend or uh, a statutory holiday uh, in the middle of a half, it screws it all up because it's not really a half. And when do you start? So they stopped doing that. But I like to do it because I want to watch the pace of the market in sales per day and then using the other chart that I use to project. So this this first 10 days of a 20 reporting day uh, month uh, said there was going to be nearly 5,100 sales at an average of 254 per day. And the second half was at closer to 285 uh, sales per day and, uh, you know, getting up there towards uh, 5,900. Now, neither of these are record breaking. If we look, when we get around to looking at our month projection, we're saying somewhere around 5,500. So guess what? It's halfway in between those two. And um, it's the 19th best February ever. So it's maybe artificial to compare it against the last 10 because the last 10 were pretty strong years. The last five were pretty strong years, except for one. But that's all we've got to go on. So um, it's it's a week, February, but individual properties are being gobbled up like crazy for two reasons. Supply is low. Now, if you get into the outer regions, there are more listings. But if you're in a good neighborhood, there are two or three listings that if you're contemplating selling, you might be in competition with. One that's in inferior condition, it's an estate sale or who knows what. Another one that's uh, been just bought and renovated, it's all fancy. And you're, as a, as a, you know, everything's five years old and your place is going to fit somewhere in between. But there's only three. There's not 10. There's not one. So it's a competitive market. And then it's further made competitive by um, the realtors who believe that putting a property on the market at less than they really expect to sell it for. And then not entertaining offers for five or seven days is the best way to compress the activity, get everybody to look at it right now, not wait, and get more than one offer to consider um, on, the, on the chosen date in the future. So this bidding war uh, strategy has become common. And I'm gonna say is, is, is the majority of listings will have this low price, hold date a strategy and people are sometimes relieved but i just had it happen to me this week where if you put it on and uh, what about you're expecting to get and have no hold date you get a lot of activity you get an offer right away and they say can i please buy your house and they don't put conditions in and nobody feels bad about having to compete because there's no competition it's just the first one to hit the number gets it so um that's all it is for this chart Okay, every month, I guess, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. We've got the January, the models of what we use, saying that if we take the previous month's inventory announced and add what we figure the current new listings are going to be, and then we subtract the relists, which are duplicates, and then we subtract the number of sales, and then we subtract the net number of terminates, the ones that do not get relisted, then we should find out what the current month of inventory is. So January, I was completely wrong, um, and I'm not going to say why. But um, now I've applied that same methodology to um, February, where we had 10, 1 nearly for the, at the end of January. I'm going to say we have about 10,000 new listings, uh, relists, the same 18% that they always uh, say. And sales, we have around 5,500. And I've been, I chart every week the uh, the terminates that come through. And uh, so we say that we have inventory of uh, somewhere around 12,000. So uh, we have a chart on that se uh, separately. But using this, then we'll see that we have about two, 229 uh, months of inventory, which is 
it's it's not the lowest we've ever seen, but it's far better than the four that we were toying with uh, in December. So inventory is down, sales are there. It's not a rocket market, but at the same time, if you're trying to buy a house, unless you're trying to buy something that nobody else wants in a neighborhood that nobody else wants, it's very competitive. So it's coming along, supply, which is a reduced number of buyers, but you know people are buying. Right, so it's coming along and as expected for spring momentum to pick up. So nothing out of no anomalies here, nothing out of the ordinary, no, no surprises. No, nothing unusual. Yeah, considering what's going on with interest rates and the past market, it's going along just fine. Let's look at prices, though. Okay, now I'm guessing that since February, January to February, in the last 23 years, we're always up in price, always. And that it averaged 6%. So I mean, 13 was the maximum, dot two. Or the, so I've given it 6%, and we end up with, you know, very close to where we were a year ago. Um, we're off by uh, two-thirds of a point. So that almost doesn't count. And again, this is an estimate. The, the peak of all of last year was in May, and we're off 9%. Uh, the market peak in February of 22, so two years ago, we're 18 and a half off that. And the maximum February, well, that's the same thing. And it's still the third highest February. If we say it's plus 6% from the month before, we're at one dot, I'm sorry, one uh, million uh, $88,305. So it's still, and only by a smidge, uh, sort of could say tied for second, but it's the third highest February ever. So um, we'll see what the actual market mix uh, determines to be the average price, but that's what it says the February uh, average should be, plus six. And so we'll see whether uh, the announcement of the mix of the 905s and of the 416s comes out to uh, uh, higher than 108 uh, or less. Do you see the price movement? I know these are averages, so I mean, it's kind of futile to guess it because every neighborhood is different, but do you see our price movement similar to last year's? I'm going to say yes. Good. Because we're going to have the same factor with people guessing about interest rates and also spring. Like we had a couple of lovely late January fall, uh, January thaw weather that everybody felt uh, we were never going to have a cold day again. And you know, we got surprised. Uh, so, yeah, it should follow the same kind of a trend, whether it will hit the same high. I don't know whether they're going to have the same intensity of crazy buying or whether once bitten, twice shy will prevail. But, uh, yeah, the, we more and more we see that uh, the market of 2022 was an anomaly. Mm -hmm. And until general economic conditions and perhaps interest rates uh, come along, we won't hit that same, you know, 18 percent more. Uh, in February uh, for a while. But uh, if you look down at the bottom of this chart, you'll see they're stacked on top of each other. And if they were three or 4% higher every year, then that was normal. So we'll see. Well, I think one thing to point out too, Robert, is uh, the projected interest rate cuts May, June yeah. would, fall, would fall into a pattern when seasonal, well, when the seasonal price, average price would go, start going downwards for the summer. So if there is any confidence or change in consumer confidence or buyer confidence, if, if they enter the market at that point, it would coincide with a slowing market typically because with spring, things tend to slow down. And also the last time when they did the interest rate uh, increases, it was interesting too that it was timed after the spring market had already happened. Well, this is the thing. Everybody is anticipating, and then we're guessing what's going to happen as they anticipate that I hear anecdotally that the Bank of Montreal is offering five-year money in the high, 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 high fours, like 495, variable and fixed. So the lenders know that the rates are coming down, and there's no point them playing the, the game that everybody else is playing. So for a good customer, you go in there, you can get a better rate. Uh, if you don't like 499, well, 499 on a variable, you can't really beat that right now because if rates come down, it's going to come down. So mm -hmm. definitely shop around on mortgage interest. So if some we we have our sales announced and our and our prices announced based on a range, but you don't get your mortgage. And you can sometimes stall your commitment until like a month before. And so rates may have 
if the closing is four months into the future, may have tapered by then. So everybody's going to try and be a little bit shrewd and a little bit sometimes too smart. But I think if we stick with our projections on interest rates and say it's going to be a normal year, look around for the best possible house and make an offer that you can afford, uh, no one will be too mad at us uh, come July. Neat. And then basically a look at the confidence in this market uh, based on your sales uh, projections. Well, yes, this is uh, 55, 18 was yesterday, 54, 90 or something other is today. So that's the actual number of sales reported uh, on the Stratus MLS system. But what you have to look at and what we've always been looking at is how does that compare to the five-year average? We're minus 26, that's 12. The 10-year average, we're minus 21. Of maximum, we're off by 50. This is the number of sales. And compared to last year, though, we're up 15%. Compared to a hot market, uh, we're off by 24%. The average is still pretty good. We're pulled up by the, the, the second and third and first best month of all time. Um, but we're the 19th best February. So it's not setting a record for sales or for prices um, just yet. So final takeaways from this uh, for our real estate chat viewers who are anticipating what's going to be announced with the Bank of Canada, which will be probably no rate hike, no rate cut, just everything level. Uh, we're in the midst of the spring market. Multiple offers are happening. Homes are selling. Uh, lower priced homes out of the city are particularly gaining a lot of, no matter what condition, like we're seeing homes outside um, in the 400, 500 range, believe it or not, there's still some homes in, in that price range getting multiple offers and some being purchased firm, even though they need a lot of work. Robert, well, real estate chat viewer is making a move. What's your advice? Okay. The uh, suburban relators, which is the way the Americans mispronounce realtor, um, are trying to lure the Toronto buyer, both the spec as well as the owner occupier, by offering prices with the list low strategy that cannot be obtained in the 416 area and even in the close in 905. And hoping that they'll get some suckers from 416 to come out and pay too much or be lured to pay big money or just, you know, just to sell the house that nobody wants uh, locally. Um, and this has happened all the way time. There used to be a company that would advertise in the Toronto Star, check these go train specials, which meant come out to Bay Ridges and see how you can save 20% from what you'd get in Scarborough. And it's just a little bit down the highway, blah, blah, blah. So uh, when they sell for a big money, the, the locals would say, huh, Toronto buyer. So don't go into a neighborhood that you don't know. If you're going to go to a new neighborhood, you're expanding yourself by 20%. You're expanding yourself by 20%. Go in to investigate and not to be lured and uh, taken advantage of. As usual, new, list oh, new listings are coming every day now. More and more new listings because uh, grandma and grandma are saying, well, maybe this is the time to sell the house, Harry. You know, and they, and they are. They are. But when they come in, they all start coming in and they all flock to the market together, right? So we'll probably see uh, an inventory rise over the next couple of weeks. And as long as per Robert's uh, projections, the sales are also keeping pace. Average price is moving along nicely as well in, on the way up. Uh, then it's just a usual market, I guess, for the spring. And yeah, if uh, prices soared, then that would be a, an indication for the Bank of Canada that they cannot drop interest rates because people right. are anticipating the drop and are buying it up to all the stuff that we said. So it's a devil, a devil in the deep blue sea. Which do you do and which do you guess? And Well, let, the, let us know if, if you have any questions about your next move, let us know in the comments or reach out to Robert or myself. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Estate Chat. Stay tuned because we're going to cover next week's announcement the moment it comes out. Right. Thanks for watching. Take care and Bye for now. See you later.